Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I wonder how Nintendo created the Nintendo Switch Lite. My theory is that Nintendo took the normal Nintendo Switch, glued the Joy-Cons onto the back, spray painted it, and then zapped it with a shrink ray, one that's conveniently attached to a belt. Murray Man and Barnacle Boy 4 is the episode where Spongebob accidentally gets a hold of Murray Man's secret utility belt and causes trouble in Bikini Bottom. This episode aired on January 21st, 2002, and is the first episode to air in the year 2002. This is also the first appearance of Sandy Cheeks in Season 3, only 9 episodes into this season. I know it's basically the same amount of time as Season 2, but still. Now as we know, this is the 4th appearance of Murray Man and Barnacle Boy, and we are halfway through the MMB episodes numbered 1 through 6. However, I have to be perfectly honest, I'm sure I'm going to have some controversial opinions here today, but out of the MMNBB episodes numbered 1 to 6, I feel that this one is the weakest of those 6 episodes. And I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous about coming back to this one. Now before I share those bad opinions, we have to watch this episode to get context on why my opinions are the way they are. So the episode starts up and Murray Man and Barnacle Boy arrive at the Krusty Krab. Barnacle Boy isn't hungry, but Murray Man insists they keep up their strength. They place an order at the register, but when they try to pay, all Murray Man has is a bolt and Squidward won't accept that. Barnacle Boy retorts, and Squidward just doesn't care, and they both call each other Big Nose. A nut is not money. Of course he can't accept that. Barnacle Boy gives Squidward the money and walks away. Spongebob bursts out of the kitchen and wants Murray Man and Barnacle Boy's autographs. He didn't already have their autographs? Murray Man and Barnacle Boy saw Spongebob running towards them, and they ran away so they didn't have to talk to him. But Spongebob saw that Murray Man had forgotten his belt, right before Murray Man and Barnacle Boy got in the invisible boat mobile. Spongebob tried to catch up with them to return the belt, but they escaped before he got to the boat mobile. Spongebob realized he was holding Murray Man's belt which helped save nations and Murray Man's pants, and wasn't all of that. He thought about returning it, but decided to do so after work. To be fair, Mr. Krabs wouldn't be happy if Spongebob was away for that long without telling him. He found out the bell works as a shrink ray and decided to have some fun. But then Squidward came in and saw everything was tiny. Spongebob tried to hide the belt, but Squidward found it and he thought that Spongebob stole it. Spongebob was desperate not to be kicked out of Murray Man and Barnacle Boy's fan club, but Squidward went to do the right thing and tell Murray Man about the belt. Spongebob was so desperate that he ended up shrinking Squidward. He could have shrunk the phone instead. He tried to return Squidward to normal, but it didn't work and he ended up putting Squidward through much worse and painful torments because he didn't know how to work the belt. Spongebob still didn't want to go to Murray Man and tried going to Patrick instead. Patrick at first thought Squidward was an action figure and played with him before Spongebob said it was the real Squidward. Patrick's biggest help was finding love for Squidward his own size, and then he changed the button on the belt from an M to Mini to a W for Wombo. Spongebob didn't think Wombo was a real word, but Patrick convinced him otherwise. So he tried it out, but unfortunately, Patrick shrunk too. Spongebob still didn't want to go to Murray Man for help and put Patrick and Squidward in a jar. Then Sandy arrived and he shrunk her out of nowhere. Then more people came across him and he started shrinking them too. How is that helping anything? Soon enough, everybody in Bikini Bottom was shrunk and crammed into the jar. Spongebob's mom told him to own up to his mistake and Murray Man overheard this. Spongebob apologized and Murray Man accepted his apology but in terms of getting everybody back to normal, even Mermaid Man didn't remember how the belt worked. So everybody burst out of the jar and started beating up Spongebob's internal organs as revenge. I've heard of accepting your fate, but is that the way to go about it? Spongebob got the idea to shrink the town, and everybody thought that was good enough and were happy again. Then Plankton returns to find Bikini Bottom smaller than him, and the episode ends. So that was Murray Man and Barnacle Boy 4. And I will say that I don't hate this episode, and I wouldn't call it legitimately bad. But I don't think it's the best Murray Man and Barnacle Boy episode either. I might as well get the rants out of the way, because they will take up a lot of time. Where do I even begin? 
Well, I guess I'll start with the plot. When Spongebob shrinks Squidward, he's worried that Murray Man will find out that Spongebob didn't return the lost belt and shrunk other people and continues to shrink everybody he comes across? Like, what? That makes zero sense. I understand why Spongebob would be worried about being kicked out of the fan club if Murray Man and Barnacle Boy found out about Spongebob not returning the belt, but that's still his own fault for not returning it in the first place. If he couldn't get off work, that's one thing. But when he shrunk everything in the kitchen for fun? Like, what did you expect to happen, Spongebob? To be fair, Spongebob did, at first, think he should return the belt before he decides not to. Oh, I guess I should return it. Or not. But I think at the very least, he should have known better than to keep shrinking everybody around him. Also, an easier solution would have been to shrink the phone and not Squidward. I know the plot couldn't happen if Squidward wasn't shrunk, but still. And if Spongebob didn't want to go to Murray Man for help, I think that after Patrick's idea failed, maybe Spongebob could have gone to Sandy for help on the situation. Sandy could have altered the belt to turn Patrick and Squidward back to normal, and then changed it back for when they return it to Murray Man. And if the writers wanted to give Spongebob comeuppance, he can get busted for using the belt at the Krusty Krab by Mr. Krab storming in to find Spongebob as he's returning the belt to Murray Man. And Spongebob could have gotten some kind of comeuppance for not returning the belt earlier. And speaking of which, let's talk about this scene. Spongebob's comeuppance is the shrunken bikini bottomites beating up his internal organs. Now I know that he was too big for them to cause an actual injury to, but something like this feels rather mean-spirited in my opinion. I don't have a problem with this being a violent scene, not at all. Heated violence can be done well, like in episode 70, Band Geeks from season 2, where everybody gets into a political debate because of how they were under pressure to play their instruments at the Bubble Bowl and they weren't doing well. And everybody's taking it out on each other instead of ganging up on Squidward. Yes, I know, Squidward did nothing wrong here and Spongebob did here, but I feel like this violent scene was executed better than this one. Not to mention, if your internal organs were getting attacked like this, that is indeed f***ing painful. I know Spongebob needed comeuppance for what he did to everybody in town, but why this way? I know that since they were tiny, there was only so much they could do, but this line here Everything's too big. almost makes it sound like they're actively trying to kill Spongebob. Man, Plankton took Spongebob's brain out of his head in episode 67, Welcome to the Chum Bucket from season 2, and now tiny bikini bottomites beat up Spongebob's internal organs. Spongebob really needs to stop letting tiny characters get the better of him. I don't know, maybe if they used different music during this sequence and toned down the sound effects, maybe I'd feel a little differently about this scene. <laughs> so overall, I just don't get what Spongebob was thinking with shrinking everybody else in town to hide the fact that he shrunk Patrick and Squidward, and I'm not a fan of how mean-spirited the Bikini Bottomites are around the end. It almost feels like all the characters are unlikable in this one. I also find it weird how panicked Murray Man and Barnacle Boy are when they see Spongebob and want to run away from him. I know he basically made them come out of retirement, but he did save their asses from the dirty bubble and they called him a hero. You saved us, son! Yeah, yeah, you're a hero! And they trusted him and Patrick to look after the Mermelator. But they did let Man Ray free from his prison chamber, so fair enough. Murray Man and Barnacle Boy may not have seen it happen on screen, but they would later find out he was free anyway, since he'll show up later. I don't know, I guess maybe they didn't trust him anymore when they found out about this incident, but since they didn't give an actual reason for why they ran away from Spongebob, aside from him being, well, Spongebob, I can't help but question why this is what they do. And speaking of which, yeah, I understand why Spongebob wants an autograph, and he was never shown getting an autograph on screen in any of the previous Murray Man of Barnacle Boy episodes, but I still find it odd that this was the first time he tried to get an autograph from them. And on top of that, he acts like this is the first time he ever saw them in person, which as we just established many times, it isn't. Okay, that was a lot of complaining, I know. 
I will admit that some of those can be considered nitpicks, like the previous issue with Spongebob dying for an autograph. But let's push negativity to the side for a moment and talk about the positives of this episode. I love the part at the beginning where Squidward and Barnacle Boy were calling each other Big Nose. I, of course, love when Patrick thinks Squidward is an action figure. This line always makes me chuckle. I like that there is a brief glimpse of what the invisible boatmobile looks like when it is visible. The ending scene with Plankton is kinda neat, Murray Man pushing the doors open at the beginning is funny, and that whole sequence of Spongebob trying to catch up with Murray Man and Barnacle Boy with them running away is pretty good. And of course, the famous Wumbo quote. I Wumbo, you Wumbo, he she me Wumbo. I will not deny that that is one of Patrick's most memorable lines. It's great, but I would just be repeating what everybody else says about it, so I'll move on. While I did say the plot is kinda stupid, there is one thing I will give a pass to, and that is Murray Man not knowing how to work his own belt. And the reason I will forgive that is because it's consistent with Murray Man's character trait of how forgettable he is. We did it, you coot. Who are you? And since it's been so long since he's actually used the belt, and he doesn't use it regularly these days, I can give it a pass for him not knowing how to unshrink anything. I will admit it is weird he didn't remember that, but I can let it slide. And besides, he says Wumbo during that scene. How can I not give it a pass? Did you set it to Wumbo? Now for a few fun facts about this episode. This is the first and so far only time SpongeBob's mom appeared without her husband, Mr. Squarepants. Swindle wears the belt covering up his pants in this episode, similar to the Hall Monitor belt from episode 14, Hall Monitor from season 1. When the Invisible Boatmobile was visible for a split second, it was revealed to be a 1959 Cadillac. While Murray Man's M on his belt is purple in this episode, it used to be yellow previously, and it will permanently become purple starting with episode 129, Murray Man and Barnacle Boy 6, The Motion Picture, from Season 4. Well, that's about all I feel I have to say. I wouldn't call this a bad episode, but I wouldn't call it one of the best episodes of the show either. I know there's a lot of people that do like this episode, and I get why. I don't hate the stupidity in this episode. I'm able to enjoy some things for how stupid they are. But Spongebob's reasons for why he doesn't tell Murray Man about the belt, leading him to shrinking everybody in town, and the mean-spirited climax, I just can't say I enjoy this as much as others do. There are some great moments here without a doubt. The Wumbo quote and the Big Nose scene are some of the best this episode has to offer. But the strange choices made throughout the story just holds me back from liking this episode more. Murray Man and Barnacle Boy 4 is an okay episode, not the worst of the series by a long shot. Hell, not even the worst of season 3. But there are just those flaws and plot points that I just can't overlook nowadays, and I can't go back and watch this episode like how I used to when I was younger. I know there are a lot of people out there who do love this episode, and I'm not trying to say you're wrong. I wish I could like it more too. But it just gets harder and harder for me to love it the way I used to the older I get. I'm sorry. Or maybe I'm in denial. If my new belt could shrink things the way Murray Man's belt could, then I'd maybe change my mind. 